Welcome readers of Bioessays to this video abstract on our recently published paper entitled Reconciling the Seemingly Reconcilable. The WHO's ICF system integrates biological and psychosocial environmental determinants of autism and ADHD, where we conclude that the international classification of functioning ICF allows to model opposed biomedical and neurodiverse views of autism and ADHD within one framework. My name is Sven Bölte. I'm the lead author on this paper. I'm with the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm in Sweden, and my co-authors are Wen Lawson, Peter Marschik, and Sonja Gerdler. With, um, they are from the Curtin University in Perth, Australia, the University of Göttingen in Germany, and the University of Graz in Austria. So neurodevelopmental conditions like, for instance, autism and ADHD, they have traditionally been viewed at, um, as diseases using the, bio, using the biomedical model. But in more recent years, um, particularly in neurodiverse uh, views of these conditions have emerged, saying that these conditions more or less arise from natural variations of the, the nervous system and that they are not necessarily disabling uh, and that they both carry weaknesses and strength. And that when impairment appears connected to these um, conditions, they are often caused by uh, the environment that is not very well adapted to the needs of these people. And that they're also strengths that people can use. They're not only weaknesses. So these two models seem very uh, diametrical to each other uh, and seem that they uh, cannot be harmonized in any ways. And they have also caused some, quite some controversy uh, in the autism and autism research uh, community. And we believe, and that is what we describe in this paper, that the ICF uh, is a tool that is extremely well suited to um, to make a compromise and to generate a consensus between these uh, two positions. The ICF um, is a model that takes an holistic view on an individual, trying to describe a person's functioning uh, in terms of uh, the body structures of a person, the body functions, the individual's activities and participation um, the environment in which uh, the individual is, and also other personal factors. So it takes really a holistic view on the individual and the environment also uh, in this model takes a huge role. And the environment can be both causal and non-causal. So it can contribute to um, the etiology of a condition, but it can also later on impact if um, an individual can functioning well or not so well in the society. So, um, and if we look at the ICF, it can, it can both integrate aspects that are claimed by the biomedical model, and it can easily also take into account psychosocial factors. So in this way, it is extremely well suited to to look at an individual from both bio biomedical perspective and a psychosocial perspective and integrate those views. So we think um, if we, if research applies more, more and um, in clinical practice, but also in research and in society, the philosophy of the ICF and uses diagnostic instruments and uses um, intervention methods that are based on philosophy and the thinking and the methods of the ICF and not only the biomedical model or the neurodiverse uh, paradigms, then this will greatly uh, improve um, both the research, uh, the clinical practice uh, and um, the whole thinking and working around neurodevelopmental disability. And it will also probably uh, an end to a controversy that is not extremely useful 
to the autism uh, and ADHD and other new developmental disability research community. So thank you very much for looking at this video abstract. I hope you will read and enjoy the paper.